Hi, folks. Welcome to Tuesday of the 33rd week of Ordinary Time. Today's the feast of the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is the feast of where Joachim and Anne took Mary to the temple and left her there. And she stayed and lived there for the longest time. And there's really no historical evidence that this ever really happened. But it, it tries to make a point that here is the temple of Jesus. Uh, consider Mary like it's a tabernacle. And Jesus... Uh, um, is the one who dwells inside, dwelt and dwelt inside of her, that she is a kind of temple herself. And that's the point we're trying to make here, but probably not historical this particular feast day today. Big feast day in the uh, Orthodox Church. I think it's the beginning of their new year, this, this feast day. We uh, use our liturgical year as the life of Jesus. The, the Orthodox Church is the life of Mary. I think it's the beginning of their, their year and all that. But I could be wrong about that, but I think that's that's true. But let's begin. So with her intercession, regardless, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let's ask God for Mary, for SS God for his mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Your Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Your word may flesh, splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. 
And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. As we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, grant we pray, O Lord, that her intercession, that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. Eleazar, one of the foremost scribes, a man of advanced age and noble appearance, was being forced to open his mouth to eat pork. But preferring a glorious death to a life of defilement, he spat out the meat and went forward of his own accord to the instrument of torture, as people ought to do who have the courage to reject the food which is unlawful to taste even for love of life. Those in charge of that unlawful ritual meal took the men aside privately because of their long acquaintance with him and urged him to bring meat for his own providing, such as he could legitimately eat and to pretend to be eating some of the meat of the sacrifice prescribed by the king. In this way, he would escape the death penalty and be treated kindly because of he, their old friendship with him. But Eleazar made up his mind in a noble manner, worthy, worthy of his years, the dignity of his advan advanced age, the merited distinction of his gray hair, and of the admirable life he had lived from childhood. And so he declared that above all, he would be loyal to the holy laws given by God. He told them to send him at once to the adobe of the dead, explaining, at our age, it would be unbecoming to make such a pretense. Many young people would think the 90-year-old Eleazar had gone over to an alien religion. Should I thus pretend for the sake of a brief moment of life, they would be led astray by me while I will bring shame and dishonor on my old age. Even if, for the time being, I avoid the punishment of men, I shall never, whether alive or dead, escape the hands of the Almighty. Therefore, by manfully giving up my life now, I will prove myself worthy of my old age, and I will leave to the young a noble example of how to die willingly and generously for the revered of the holy laws. Eleazar spoke thus and went immediately to the instrument of torture. Those who shortly before had been kindly disposed now became hostile towards him because what he had said seemed to them utter madness. When he was about to die under the blows, he groaned and said, The Lord, in his holy knowledge, knows full well that, although I could have escaped death, I am not only enduring terrible pain in my body from this scourging, but also suffering it with joy in my soul because of my devotion to him. This is how he died, living in his death, a model of courage, and an unforgettable example of virtue, not only for the young, but for the whole nation. The Word of the Lord. Just suit, attend to my outcry, hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. My steps have been steadfast in your paths. 
my feet have not faltered. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. But I, in justice, shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intending to pass through the town. Now, a man there named Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was, but he could not see him because he was because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead, climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I want to stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay in the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half my possessions I shall give to the poor. If I have extorted anyone anything, for any, uh, I will repay it four times over. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I, I, it said there was short in stature there. I'm going to get to that in a moment. But if you look at the, the picture we chose, which I kind of like it in many ways, he doesn't look short in stature, does he? But I think it was a little guy. But anyway, so here's Jesus on the way to Jerusalem, he's almost there. He's in Jericho, and uh, there's a crowd following him. See, we're on chapter 19. This is He's going to get there really, really soon. And um, the crowd's there. There's a buzz. Jesus had a reputation by this point. And so uh, uh, it says that Zacchaeus wanted to see him, short in stature. Now, the average person in that day was about five foot tall. Now, I'm six foot tall. So imagine uh, Zacchaeus uh, being, you know, a lot, sh they, they point out with short and stout. He must maybe four foot tall or something like that. Very, very short in some way. So, so he climbs this sycamore tree. Now he's a wealthy guy, well-known. People are afraid of him. And it's the kind of sign of humility that he actually climbs a sycamore tree to see Jesus. I think you can almost imagine him up there with a bunch of little kids, you know, they're watching Jesus come by and their little kids are there. And there's Zacchaeus. Imagine that picture in some way. Maybe the one we have up here a little bit too. But here's the thing. He not only sees Jesus, he encounters him. He meets him. He's grasped by Jesus. And something has happened to him. And so Jesus recognizes that. When someone uh, is struck by Jesus, Jesus knew what that meant. He says, Zacchaeus, hurry down. I want to stay at your house. Now, what does that mean? Number one, let's talk about this. In our day, having a meal with somebody means absolutely nothing. And that day, it was a big, big deal. It was an offer 
of intimate friendship to be with somebody that way. And uh, uh, in our circles, that doesn't mean the whole thing. But in that world, that meant a big, big deal. So here's Jesus making an offer of friendship to Zacchaeus before he even knows if Zacchaeus is going to accept it. Now, I think Jesus noticed something happening to this guy, but he didn't know. Zacchaeus may have just blew him off. Could you imagine him up in a tree just laughing at Jesus and, oh, me have, a, me have dinner with you? Forget it, buddy. And Jesus would have been the one with egg on his face in some way. But he takes the risk, as Jesus always asks us to do. Here's the second point. He accepts the offer of friendship. He begins to see himself with the eyes of Jesus. Remember one time I said that um, one thing that most prevents us from experiencing intimacy with Jesus what is the one thing that, uh, that does, that, does that for us? Is we become afraid of seeing him. And I guess I want to put it this way. Seeing ourselves in Jesus' presence. Here's a really interesting book. The Lost Art of Walking on Water. Some of you guys just read the book. Um, if you want to walk on water, get out of the boat. Um, here's a book. This is for priests. But I, I think it's a good book for anybody. The Lost Art of Walking on Water. Anyway, he writes this. How did Yahweh realize that our first parents had disobeyed him and eaten the, eat from the tree? Yahweh noticed that they were unexpectedly ashamed of themselves. Who, who, who told you that you were naked? He thundered. The serpent had promised that the fruit from the tree would open their eyes, and it did. What did they see? What did they immediately see? They felt the need to hide from God, to hide themselves from God. Having to face God is not what makes prayer so challenging. Having to face ourselves in God's presence. Now, that's difficult. It is absurd to think that we can enter heaven, St. Teresa of Avila once said, without first encountering our own soul, without getting to know ourselves. If you want to know why we do not reach the intimacy of walking with God in the cool of the evening that Adam and Eve had before the fall, it is our unwillingness to see ourselves as we truly are. Now, Zacchaeus obviously was willing to see himself as he truly was. And it goes on to say that, that, that he begins to realize that he had to seek this relationship with Jesus. Some things has to be done first. And so it, it goes on to say, um, Behold, half my possessions I will give to the poor. If I've extorted anything from anybody, I will pay it four times over. So this reconciliation that's required of us to be able to stand face to face with God, which we're all going to have to do in some fashion in our lives, Zacchaeus did it there and he welcomes Jesus into his house and begins this intimate friendship. This is a perfect example, this story is, of what this intimacy that Jesus longs to have with us is all about and how you and I are called to respond to this kind of intimacy that Jesus asks of all of us. He goes in, Zacchaeus does, and he seeks the relationship. He is absolutely risking everything on this Jesus Christ. Here's my question, which we are called to do. Here's my questions for today. Do you see how we must accept, like Zacchaeus, Jesus' offer of friendship? And do you see how their relationship has to be mutual back and forth for all of us? God bless you, folks. I hope that made sense to you. And thanks for seeing you. And looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Goodbye now.